Design tools. There are a lot of them, right? And I don't know about you, but I often feel a lot of pressure to keep up with the trends of what everyone else is using in our industry. So I like to try new tools out, just, you know, see how they function. But for the most part in my design career so far, I've been pretty reluctant to switch tools completely. I think there's a big learning curve that comes with completely learning a new tool and fitting it into your workflow, adapting it to suit how this new tool works. It's a big deal. And so I've not made too many major software switches. About four years ago, I made the switch from using Photoshop for web designs to using Sketch. And it was an amazing decision. It improved my design workflow immensely. And I have made a video about my Sketch 101 intro if you're interested in watching that. But after four happy years of using Sketch as my web design tool of choice, I've recently made the switch to Figma. And I wanna tell you why. So unlike my switch from Photoshop to Sketch, Sketch and Figma are very similar in that they're both vector-based tools that both have an infinite canvas where you create like an artboard or a frame and do your design on there. The left-hand side has all of the layers. And just like what I loved about Sketch in Figma, when you click on an element, the right-hand panel adapts to fit what the properties are that you can change for the element itself. So all in all, as you can see, fairly similar. But with Figma, I've noticed a lot of really small details that have been worth it for me to make the switch. I first started using Figma when another designer on our team was using Figma for a project and shared a link with me to give feedback on it and so that I could copy some elements from it. I absolutely love that in Figma, you can just share a link with someone and they can have access to the project to comment on it, to start editing it themselves, to copy elements from it into their, a project of their own. I love the collaboration aspect of Figma. With Sketch, it felt more like I would have to send the file to someone via Slack for them to open it on their own computer. And it meant that if I made changes, that person's file would be out of date. So in a team setting, those collaboration features of Figma were what I first really liked about it. As I was using it, I started noticing little things like if you delete all the elements from within a group, the group itself will disappear because obviously it's not a group anymore if there's nothing in it. A really small thing, but I would find that my sketch files would get quite messy with lots of groups where I'd moved elements from them or whatever, but the group still existed. Another nice touch is in the color picker. You can use your arrow keys to make your color lighter or darker based on you know the one that's already there. I thought that was such a cool feature and really came in handy for me when I was creating our brand color palette. Another thing is layers and moving them around. I felt like in Sketch I was always having to find the layer that I wanted and, and shift it up in the layers panel because I could never remember what the short key was for moving a layer forward or backwards. I love that in Figma it is just the same as it is in Photoshop. It's command and a bracket. It's a super easy short key to press. It makes it really fast to be rearranging layers as you're designing something. And I like that in their menus as well, they show what the short key is in case you've forgotten. That's not something that Sketch do. And so that's why I'd always forget what the key for moving something forward or back was. And in the end, just go into the layers and, and move it manually myself. Something else I really like is being able to copy properties. So in Sketch, you can copy the properties of a shape or you know an object, whatever, and paste it onto a new one. But when you do that, you're copying all of the properties onto the new shape. Whereas in Figma, you can also copy all of the properties if you want to, but you could also just copy the fill or perhaps just the font or just the stroke. It means if you've got something right in one place, it's super easy just to apply it to other things. You can comment on files in Figma too, which has been really handy again for working across a team and giving feedback to each other. I know a lot of in-house marketing or product designers might sometimes share the Figma file with stakeholders and get them to leave comments that way. But personally, I still prefer using something like Envision for that because I feel like then people are seeing the design like full width in a browser in its intended state rather than being able to zoom out and see all the artboards at once. But that is just, you know, personal preference of mine and how I like to give and, you know, get feedback. But all in all, the commenting feature is really handy. And then possibly the best part is Figma is free. With Sketch, you pay for a license and I think you get a year's worth of updates on that license. And then you uh, you stay on that version, the last version that you had until you want to upgrade again to get new versions. With Figma, you don't even need to pay for it at all. They do have like professional team accounts or whatever for if you want more projects, a bit more functionality, but all of the things that you need to do to design a web page, you can do in the free version of Figma, which I think is really cool and a great contribution to design in general. Another great thing is you can use it whether you're on a Mac or a PC. So for all those people who keep asking me if there's a sketch alternative for PC, 
Figma is now my answer. <laughs> so while there are a lot of good things about Figma, there are also some things that took me a while to get used to and that I'm still not so sure about. One of them is the way that frames resize. The automatic state of it is that if you expand the frame, it'll try and like auto resize the content in it. And as a web designer, that is not something that I always want to have happen. For example, I will lay out a frame, but perhaps I haven't made it quite long enough for all of the content that I need to lay out on this web page. So I drag it down and then all of my content goes to shit. <laughs> there are ways around this, like you can hold the command key as you're expanding an artboard and everything will stay exactly where it is. But that just took a little bit of getting used to for me. Something I struggled with at first, but now really like is the way Figma handles images. In Sketch, I just drag an image in and that was it. It was like a bitmap image block that I could then double click on to crop and, you know, change the saturation, things like that. In Figma, when you drop an image in, it actually makes it like a rectangle with an image as the fill. So if you want to crop it, if you want to tile it or whatever, you just come into the fill settings and make your changes in there. So that was a little bit confusing at first, but it's actually really handy because I would find in Sketch a lot of the time I would be making a whole bunch of masks to get my image to be the right size. So it's much easier to do that if the image is already, when you put it in, a fill of a shape. Another thing is the way that Figma handles vectors. So Sketch has notoriously not been great at vectors. There are options and you can do most things, but I would find myself for the most part uh, going into Illustrator. And in fact, I saw this tweet the other day that I thought was hilarious and very accurate. Figma handles vectors in a completely different way to what I've seen before. They use what they call vector networks. In usual vector programs, a point can really only have two connections to it. But in Figma, you can have multiple and it means you can create complex shapes. Um, it just takes a little bit of getting used to the way that it works. But so far, I've found that I can do most things that I need to do in Figma without needing to open Illustrator. Then the last frustrating point that I've experienced so far is that Figma is actually a web based tool. So it runs in your browser or it does have a Mac app as well. So you can essentially use that browser window, but have it as like an icon. This was my first concern and main reason for not trying it sooner is that I do a lot of work without the internet. Like say I'm in a cafe and the connection is bad, might just not even connect it to the Wi-Fi. or say I'm on a plane, for example, and I still want to be able to work on my designs. So you can access projects offline on Figma if you're using the Mac app and you have the tab open, before you go offline. So once you're offline, you can't open up a project and edit it from there, but you can keep editing any projects that you already have open. So that is definitely a downside. It means that you have to remember to open it before you get on the plane, before you go to that cafe without Wi-Fi. But so far for me, the positive qualities of Figma far outweigh this one. And so I haven't like found that trade-off a bad thing yet. In making the switch, I found the learning curve a lot easier than the Photoshop to Sketch learning curve was. That was quite difficult for me. But like I said, Figma and Sketch are pretty similar in the way they work. It's just that Figma has these little things that make the experience better for me. So I've actually found myself having nice surprises as I go about my process and find easier ways to do things. To make the switch also, you can import Sketch files into Figma and they will convert them into a Figma file for you. What you can't do is copy an element in Sketch and then paste it into Figma. Doesn't work that way, unfortunately, which has been a little frustrating because it's meant sometimes I've imported a whole big project with like, you know, 20 different iterations of an artboard just because I wanted this one element to copy into a Figma file, but hey ho. So to wrap up, I would say that if you're a Sketch user, it is definitely worth giving Figma a try. I've found that all these small little improvements have sped up my design workflow, just made things easier for me, enough that it has a real impact on the work that I'm getting done at the end of the day. And that's what's important to me. This switch is fairly new for me, so I'm sure that I will learn more about the tool and have more little nice surprises to share with you as I go about using it more and, and learning those things. But for now, I'm really happy with the Switch and I'm not missing Sketch at all. I want to be clear too that I don't think Sketch is a bad tool by any means. Sketch worked perfectly for me for years and it's just that now I find Figma suits me better. At the end of the day, the best design tool is the one that you find fast and easy to use and the one that you feel most confident with. So. I know that we designers love to talk about tools though, so I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and hearing my thoughts. I wanna hear what design tool you use for web design. What's your go-to at the moment? What have you tried out in the past and not got on with so well? Tell me about it down below in the comments. Let's have a chat down there. If you're new to my channel as well, then I make new design videos every single week. So hit the subscribe button and I would love to have you back for the next one. All right, hope you have a good day, no matter what design tool you're using. 
go create some good stuff and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.